At CamCon Asia 2019 in Seoul, we already said the K-Reach ball is in the air and industry must make sure they hit it on time. Now you did. As of 2021, numerous K-Reach registrations have been submitted. And currently many companies and SECOs are preparing for the upcoming registration deadline for all 100 and 1000 ton chemicals. And all these SECOs want to score a hit with a robust registration dossier. That might feel like a blind audition, but it's not, since a lot of implementation experiences have been gained over the last few years. So time to discuss these lessons learned with our K-REACH experts, or should I say K-POP idols, Dahe Kim from Merck and June Lee from Kim and Chang. Let's start with some lessons learned from the first K-REACH registration deadline, end of 2021. By the end of 2021, the companies were required to register existing substance for the, the tonnage band of more than 1,000 ton. Right? But the, the, we have observed that the many companies that file their application too late. So there was a backlog of the lots of application pending review. So that there was a, a lot of issue where the MOE had a really the difficult time to process all of these things. So that they were not able to issue the certificate of registration by the end of 2021 even though the applications were made in time. So the problem was there that you need to have this certificate to be compliant with the KRIDGE. So what they had to do was to report or they amend their uh, declaration from the 1,000 ton over tonnage band from the, to the, uh, the lower tonnage band so that they are within the uh, uh, grace period but then once they get uh, the certificate from the MOE, then, then they can proceed with the importation or manufacturing of the uh, existing chemicals in 2022. So that, that was sort of the main issue we observed uh, at the end of 2021. So we're upcoming uh, the second, uh, the registration period. So that definitely the companies are required or and then advised to submit their application as early as possible. Okay, and the backlog was uh, only at the Ministry of Environment, MOE, or were companies also really too late? So the, this one, this deadline was announced the way before. So the, and then the, we are adopting uh, EU reach to the K reach. So that they expected, oh, this is coming. So I think this is more of the MOE, which had gone through this process for the first time. So they had other difficult times to process and they didn't expect how many applications they will get uh, at the end of first, uh, the grace period end. Yeah, so yeah, reach, K reach, EU reach, any reach can be a lot of work for both industry and of course for authorities. Um, where in Europe eh, we have the uh, CIFs, the Substance Information Exchange Fora, you have here your CICOs, your kind of KCIF. Okay. Can you remind how they are formed and operating? So the CICO is a uh, chemical substance information communicative organization. So it's just like CIF. But I mean, it consists of the passive members and then also active members who are actually engaging in the negotiation and then uh, gathering documents and then a dossier, basically. Uh, and then there's a lead registrant. So who's leading the whole CICO? So the basically uh, this leader or the lead registrant is a foreign like the multinational companies. They already have some data from EU-rich compliance so that they utilize their information uh, and then share it with the active members. And then once the registration completed, then, then they can share this information with the passive uh, registrant, uh, passive uh, the members of the SICA. So that's a sort of general structure of the SICO in Korea. Uh, but usually there are just a few number of active members in the SICO, and then most of them are participating in the SICO as a passive member, just a paying fees and then get the, all the access to the necessary um, the registration dossier. Okay, yeah, paying fees of course is important eh, because a big part of the dossier is data. Data that is often owned uh, by companies and consortia outside uh, Korea, like the EU REACH consortia. Sure. What are the uh, challenges and solutions that you have seen in the data negotiations? 
So as you can imagine, the data owners are in foreign country, and then usually, as you mentioned, they're big companies. So that they have more bargaining power over the Korean uh, registrants in Korea. So usually, the, there are not much of negotiations. But I mean, so time-wise, uh, the registrants in Korea were to get this uh, documents or the information as soon as possible, because they're up against the deadline as we saw the back in 2021. So that they are usually willing to pay more uh, to the data owners. And that's a sort of the general uh, sort of observation that we had. Yeah, and, the, and there is, of course, always the bargaining chip. Eh? Exactly. If, you can, if you make new data in Korea, eh, right. then that might surprise you with different results, and you don't want that. So eh, the, yeah. there is one big incentive for uh, EU consortia and other data owners to have the same test only once and not multiple versions of it with potentially uncertain outcomes. Exactly. So the, the funny thing is that uh, the CICO members, uh, they want to, of course, they cover all uh, the, the companies who are uh, planning to register same chemical substance. But I mean, sometimes they are in competition. So they don't want <laughs> to allow uh, these competitors to join their CICO, but they have to. Otherwise, as you mentioned, that they can create new data that will affect negatively on their pre-existing registration. So this is really interesting uh, dynamics between uh, companies. Absolutely. Registration is one thing, eh? but there are other dynamics like communication with your downstream users. Hey, can you share some downstream user communication experiences? Yeah. <clears throat> Communicating with downstream users are very important and necessary step for registration process because we have to obtain the user and exposure information from them and also we have to provide substance information after we complete the registration. Uh, but sometimes it is very difficult and challenging for us because the so structure of supply chain is very complex in Korea. So sometimes it is very challenging for us to communicate and reach out to them. And sometimes they, uh, if, even if we contact them, and sometimes they don't want to share that kind of information, and they are not that happy with to share that kind of information because they are thinking that is a very sensitive information and they are thinking there is a kind of trade secret like that. It is very challenging for us to communicate with them. And do they understand that if their use is not in the dossier, that their use is no longer an option? Is that part of your conversation with them? Yeah, but the use, use and exposure information is uh, essential to make a registration dossier. So, and we couldn't get inform any information without them. So we have to get those information only from them. But sometimes they feel very reluctant to provide that information to registrant, I mean, manufacturer or importer. Is there also active promotion by MOE, for instance, the Ministry of Environment yeah. on helping down to users to better understand that yeah. they need to provide it. Do they help that? Yeah, as I know, there was a kind of a report published by Ministry of Environment in 2021, maybe. But some of the downstream users still uh, they are still not aware of that report, and what they they don't know what is the obligation of carriage. So I think it should be improved. So the Korean authority should make more efforts to improve their awareness on the obligation of carriage. Okay, so June said uh, the, the authority is very busy and they do make a lot of other things as well. Eh? Recently, the Korean authority announced the amendment of the threshold of new chemical registration set from 100 to a ton, which is positive, of course, for, for industry and that it's as of January 1st, 2025. Uh, June, can you share what the impact is of this amendment? Under the, the, the initial carriage, every single new chemical substance are required to be registered. 
depending or regardless of how, how much uh, you're importing or manufacturing. But then now that we made this uh, new, the not this one is a new one, but I'm the, uh, the previous one, we created this 100 kilogram threshold. Now we're moving on to the one ton uh, threshold. That's very uh, consistent uh, with the EU carriage. Uh, so I think that we're making improvement. And then most of these new chemical substances were imported or manufactured in very small amount, right? So the 100 kilogram, we don't know how many uh, registration were done uh, back there, but I mean, we can expect, I mean, this is gonna lift lots of the burdens uh, on the uh, chemical uh, companies to register this new chemical substances in Korea. Dae, you want to add something? Yeah, I agree with him because it is definitely uh, beneficial to industry because we can reduce our burden, especially for the registration of low volume chemicals. So we can save the cost and we can save the time because yeah, reduce, lead time will be reduced. So finally, the product can be delivered more faster to our customers. So I think it, this amendment will help to boost Korean chemical industry. So it's great that the authority is raising the threshold. Eh? That's good for industry. Uh, there are many other amendments, eh? uh, like the hazard-based safety information as part of the Chemicals Control Act. Um, June, can you tell a little bit more about that? Under K-REACH and then also the Chemicals Control Act, uh, so the, these chemicals are regulated heavily. But I mean, on the, specifically under K, uh, the Chemicals Control Act, hazardous chemical substances uh, are regulated. So the, this particular he hazardous chemical substance are defined in the six different categories. But I mean, regardless of their toxicity or the nature, once you have this hazardous chemical substance, you are subject to this really uh, serious or intensive regulation. So the recognizing that is uh, sort of it's not about the, the protecting, or it is a protecting uh, the, the public's safety, but also they wanted to consider sort of the nature of toxicity of the, the, those chemicals. So they now uh, getting rid of these six different categories of hazardous substance, uh, hazardous chemical substance. And now they're introducing three different categories: acute hazardous substance, chronic hazardous substance, and environmentally hazardous substance. So that depending on how toxicity that they have or how much toxicity that they have, now they are subject to different types of regulation. So if you're dealing with a more toxic substance, then you are subject to uh, more uh, severe or intense regulation. So that's just sort of the one uh, sort of the uh, amendment that they made uh, recently on the Chemicals Control Act. But also they introduced uh, the OR system, the only representative. So you are familiar with the OR system in the k region and KBPR, but also that they introduce this OR system into chemicals contract. Under the chemical contract, at chemicals contract, you are required to submit the written confirmation when you're importing chemical product. So basically it's a one page document. You're notifying to the government that what kind of chemicals you are importing or manufacturing basically. Uh, so as I indicated earlier, there are six categories. And then also you have the uh, existing chemical substances and then uh, new chemical substances subject to the registration under k -Rich. So you're just identifying, okay, I'm importing or manufacturing these uh, chemicals. But I mean, when you're submitting this uh, written confirmation, you have to also submit chemical information, basically to prove or support your uh, submission. Recognizing this chemical information contains uh, very uh, sort of a serious or the other trade secrets, confidential information. So some manufacturers are reluctant to share this information, even though it's just one page document. So the, now by introducing this OR system, now the, the, the 40 manufacturers are more, I guess, the willing to share their information so that they can, uh, their confidential information can be protected by the OR, can share the only uh, the confidential information with. 
by the only representative. That's right. June, you already mentioned uh, uh, CBI, uh, Confidential Business Information. KOSHA recently updated their MSDS requirements and added new CBI regulations. Yeah. Are these then similar to KREACH or? So the basically, uh, as we discussed so far, the Korean government, particularly this administration, is very pro-business. As they are trying to relax some of the duplicative or the difficult or unnecessary regulations, uh, really focusing on uh, the protecting the public. So CBI amendment, I mean, they're also allowing uh, foreign manufacturers to share more information under certain protection. So that basically it's going to be much easier for manufacturers to share this information in a certain protective way. Uh, so previously, we allowed, or the, the OSHA allowed a certain information to be replaced, or so the uh, max with the uh, alternative, uh, the name or the contents information, but that was only applicable to certain products. But now they expanded the scope of a product that can utilize this, the protection system. Uh, so I think that they will facilitate uh, sharing uh, this confirm confirm uh, the confidential information with the Korean uh, registrants uh, going forward. But in general, the COSHA addresses general hazardous uh, information. Uh, so that's their focus. And then Chemicals uh, Control uh, Act and also KREACH, they are more focused on the hazardous substances information. So this is the scope is a little bit smaller uh, the within KREACH and the Controls Chemical uh, Control Act, the Chemicals Control Act, but the OSHA has a much broader scope, so that it will apply the more uh, the chemical substance. I would say. Okay. Besides the Chemical Control Act, uh, DAHEA, and besides KOSHA and KREACH, some companies also need to comply with KBPR. Do you have any suggestions, lessons learned that you can share on KBPR? Yeah, uh, Merck Korea is participating some of the approval processes for biocide substances and products, especially disinfectants. And yeah, I feel KBPR is more complicated compared to KRIT because we have to submit more data for evaluation and also the standard of the evaluation is more complex but I think there are still some unclear part in the regulation because it is still very early stage so yeah we have to communicate more with the with the authority and also we have to clarify the regulation as soon as possible. Okay, great. You want to add something on this? Yeah, I mean, so KBPR is, is not BPR, <laughs> so yeah, I would say. So it's a difference. So it has a Korean component to it. So when you expect uh, the compliance with the KBPR, it's going to be the similar to compliance with the uh, EU BPR. But I mean, it has a two different components. So the biocidal component and also the common household uh, regulate the, the product the chemical product uh, component. So it's going to be a little bit different. And then we, we adopted or, or incorpor we incorporated different aspects of our product uh, compliance into KBPR. So definitely you need to be aware of details because uh, always the, the devil's in the details. So you need to know the details to comply, fully comply with the KBPR. Okay, yeah, I mean, details are important. Uh, the practical implementation of KBPR, KOSHA, and KREACH, and other chemical regulations in Korea. That's a learning process for both industry and also for authorities. If you, one of you, or both of you as a team, could coach them, what suggestions for improvement would you have? I think exchanging between industry and the authority is very important. So I think industry has to share their experiences and lesson learned to the authority and also authority should hear some opinions from industry. So we have to improve the implementation of the regulation. And June, if you would coach them? Yep, if I would, then <laughs> we need to act faster uh, and then take measures 
as early as possible. So, I mean, this, for example, the ChemCon is a great opportunity for us to learn how other jurisdictions are actually implementing uh, these chemical regulations in advance, right? So, the government, also the companies, and also lessons from the 2021 uh, registration, you need more time to prepare and then apply for registration. There's gonna be lots of steps in the process. Uh, definitely, we'll, we'll definitely need to uh, get, go ahead and then uh, start preparing this, at least the upcoming 2024 deadline. Now, hey and June, thank you both for sharing your expertise. Very useful for everyone preparing their K-REACH dossiers. And don't forget, end of this year, it is registration time. So come on. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you.